Today's video is an ongoing project for months now of me sitting in my dark room staring into the abyss and asking myself yet again what to do for a video of unnecessary length that has nothing to do with my channel's origins so people start asking yet again if and why I'm no longer making videos to welcome to the game 2. A game mind you that I really enjoy personally but hasn't been officially updated for 3 years now and of which I covered everything I could imaginable even to an absurd degree if I might say so myself. Until the developer brings out a new game or updates the old one it will stay that way by the way if you didn't guess the answer already. Okay, sorry for that mini rant right off the bat, but it does get annoying answering this question. The same question over and over again when, you know, my channel direction has taken another path. Because, you know, I can't do the same thing over and over again. Point is, today I will try to answer a question that I and a few viewers asked me at the time when I still streamed DVD. So essentially a decade ago when my internet wasn't dog shit and that was how I would change Ghostface if I was in charge of that task. It is well known that Ghostface hasn't received that many changes over the past, well, uh, pretty much forever since he came out and that a large amount of content creators regard him as a weak C or D type killer, which I personally highly disagree with, but that's another topic for yet another long unnecessary video. Keeping that in mind, he needs some sort of changes desperately and will get them as confirmed in a recent Q&A stream, so I actually had to hurry up with this video before the subject becomes irrelevant. So welcome guys and girls to my Ghostface rework concept or idea or even a wishlist or whatever you wanna call it. Me as a Ghostface player since day one and several hundred hours on him worked out a complete pass on base kit and add-ons myself over the last few months or so that is far from perfect but I'm quite happy with. And yes, I presented one in my guide, like a guideline, but even this one is no longer up to date as I reallocated that one as well. And in this video, I will not only present all the proposed changes, but also discuss and rate them from how I would see them in the game. Whether you as a viewer are a ghost based main yourself, a killer main, or survivor main, or just vibing to the game, I hope you can go into this video with a bit of an open mind and give opinions about the proposed changes afterwards, which I would really appreciate it on this video especially. This will probably become a very long video as this, so let's get right into it. So the first part of this video, which will be the smaller chunk of it, will be discussing base kit changes. Unlike what lots of people say about him, Ghostface himself doesn't need a power overhaul in my estimation, like he is a killer with a high mental skill cap that gets underestimated by lots of players and streamers alike with one strong power kit with fair counterplay and a potential to perform incredibly well even against strong players if played flawlessly, which in itself is very hard, don't get me wrong, but he has the potential. As said before, I will probably make a longish video about my opinion on how strong Ghostface himself is at some point, but it is the gist of what I feel about it. The probably most talked point about Ghosty's power that needs change or is, you know, just highly discussed from a balancing standpoint is his re power recovery speed. It used to be 30 seconds up until last mid chapter which was a very long cooldown making him categorized as Alan dependent by many. Now it is down to 24 seconds and a lot more manageable. At first glance, many experts and for the longest time also me shared the opinion that 20 seconds should be the ultimate base kit justified to the fact that, spoiler alert, my add-on pass does not have direct recovery add-on modifiers anymore. You know like currently Chute Pen and Orson's address book that like shape of recovery time, they are not part of my add-on pass. However, there was a core issue with that that changed my mind and made me end up resonating with my final conclusion that 24 seconds without any recovery add-on should be the final form of this problem. Let me elaborate. 
The main purpose of recovery add-ons right now is that they give the Ghostface player more chances to use their power and make misplays less punishing, as well as good plays more rewarding. You use your power correct and you can use it again more quickly. You get revealed a lot and the add-on compensates the misplay better than any of the so-called reveal add-ons ever and I mean ever could. The issue that I have with this is that it is too much unnecessarily hand-holding and encourages less skill ghost face gameplay, more notably the inferior hit and run playstyle. Going deeper on that, let me give you an image. For the longest time I was running double recovery add-ons, as I always had them, because I had hundreds of those with level ups and ghost face and why not use them, right? It felt like I was using a drug, and obviously I had lots of success with it. Now somewhat at the beginning of the year I started to leave them out of my build as I tried to get better and see how I would do without them. All the clips from my montages of this year where you can't see add-ons next to my power are a testament to that by the way. And I started to realize that unlike some content creators out there were saying that Ghostface was never that end or independent. Yes I agree that the 30 second cooldown for the longest time was horrible, obviously. But if you had skill with that character and you could use your night shroud like a smart cookie and do smart 99ing and shit, you really could compensate for the lack of recovery for the most part. There were some scenarios where you still suffered from the long wait where it took too long after hooking to get rolling back and so on. But guess what, these scenarios were pretty much fixed with the changes in the 4 point, 5 point, excuse me, 5.3 mid chapter update where they put it down to 24 seconds. To maybe give you a different image, let me walk you through a scenario where for some reason Huntress would need a buff. She doesn't need it for the record, but le let's pretend for a second. Maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but in my opinion, overbuffing the recovery on the Ghostman would feel like giving Huntress 10 headshots instead of 5 and maybe even make her movement speed 4.6 instead of 4.4 for good measure. What would happen in Huntress's case is that all of a sudden her skill ceiling becomes so much lower as you get punished less for mistakes and your weaknesses as a slower killer are less apparent. It's obviously a thing of perspective as many people believe that Ghostface doesn't have a high skill cap to begin with even though he has in my opinion, it is not a mechanical but a mental one. But the too long didn't read version is that overbuffing the recovery rate on him would drastically decrease his skill required to play him and get good results which I personally would be against. Like I feel like a killer like him should still have some difficulties like a skill ceiling so he doesn't get shit for free and only if you play well you get rewarded well. Therefore in my concept the current 24 second is the value I choose for the recovery rate. Okay, besides that whole blah blah, there are uh, some actual minor tweaks I would do to his power that are not that impactful gameplay wise, but more quality of life improvements. Completely disregarding that grabs or action interrupts or how you want to call them are inconsistent as fuck right now because of the servers. I do propose changes to them as there are some add-ons with that functionality in my rework concept. Some simple stuff actually, there should be a deviousness point gain of 800 blood points for grabbing someone during night shot called shrouded, just like spirit has one called possession for her when she grabs people. For you uh, you know point gains like it's nothing major gameplay wise it's just for point gains that it's more worth to go for grabs in that instance also for consistency sake instead of grabs creating this weird state of not revealing you and the survivor doing it while they are on your shoulder any grab should end night shroud automatically and put it immediately on the 24 second cooldown Last but not least, a few adjustments to Undetectable itself. There should not be the jumpscare sound effect while you are in stealth. For, you know, reasons. 
Like, trust me, you want to turn your camera to full spine shell sideways, but the game randomly plays the sound effect so they still know you are coming. It happened to me before and was completely out of my control. Speaking of which, I did not propose any spine shell changes in my rework concept, which I guess you could make. It not trigger when undetectable, which is fair with how hard this one perk fucks not only with ghosty, but also other killers powers, add-ons and even perks like spine shell is crazy strong with how much it does. I had a concept once of making that an add-on, but I scrapped that one as I didn't want it to be one add-on. But I suppose you could make it one. I do think Spine Chill is way stronger than it should be, but let it rest for I I let it rest for now. I should say in these proposed changes. Also to touching the subject of like the buggy reveal, I suppose do more things to make the servers better as the mechanic itself is completely fine. Unlike some survival mains say out there that just don't know how to do it. Like like for real, I play against lots of streamers that just don't know how it actually works and call it broken when they can't reveal me. Of course there are some glitches with it, like I won't deny that, but at least educate yourself about that before you call it broken like they do, like educate yourself on how the mechanic actually works and see if you do any mistakes with it before you call it broken. That's my little rant say, but like, yeah maybe make the servers better to like detect it better and make the glitches the small glitches that sometimes happen less frequent. Okay, deep breaths as we made it to the shorter part of the video with the base kit changes now. The real meat will be the add-on pass as if you know anything about Ghostface you know that his add-ons are terrible right now for the most part even after the buffs in the 5.3 update. But before we go into that I want to take a moment to talk about the design philosophy and criteria that went in when making this pass I suppose. The overall goal of this add-on pass was to make the add-ons better obviously, which is not that hard, let's be real, but also give them unique effects for the most part. I went against the design philosophy of stat increases and three versions of like, like a lot of killers in recent memory have, you know like... Permit head, Deathslinger, you get the gist. In more how behavior handles some of the nurses and trapper add-ons with interesting effects that are not the strongest necessarily than they could have been, but interesting with even more unique playstyle options. Also try to keep it somewhat thematic with the add-on icons and stuff, pronunciation on tried. Like if behavior was gonna do the add-on pass, it would switch out rarities at will and even create new add-on icons to match effects. I didn't do any of that. The add-ons themselves have different conditions that they need to trigger also. They are mostly either non, downing a survivor who is marked, and either affecting people outside of the terror radius or requiring you to down them while you are still in night shroud or an effect that affects only survivors that are at least 50% stalked, which is, you know, a variable that depending on how balanced one add-on or the other is, you could, like, move around. With that out of the way, let's talk about the only add-ons left with that stat increaser 3 type rule, which are the stalking add-ons. These are the new Philly, the telephoto lenses and the night vision monocular add-ons. Instead of being based on stalking while not leaning, these add-on effects now are ticking in if you stalk a survivor that is not currently running. So either they are standing still, walking, crouching or most commonly doing tasks such as repairing or healing. The values are 10% for Philly, 15% for the telephoto lenses and 20% for the monocular. Refer for all the stalking values both leaning and standing to the grid on the screen. This solves the problem that these add-ons are kinda pointless if you lean all the time as you should while giving survivors that leanway option that if they notice you they can make distance and you can't get value out of it. If the values 
turn out to be too oppressive, which I personally don't believe they are, you could add a dozen stack condition to it and the add-ons would be fine. Overall, I think that makes the stalking adders infinitely better either way. From now on, we will go from rarity to rarity and add-on to add-on, starting with the brown common ones and the headline cutouts. This add-on goes from being completely, I mean completely worthless to a new effect that is probably not the most useful in all games or situations, but at least, well, an interesting effect. Increases the maximum stalking range by 12 meters. For those unaware, the way both Ghosties and Maya stalking works is that there is a maximum range of 40 meters, so you can't stalk survivors beyond that range. This add-on increases that range to 52 meters, which has occasional use for far distance stalks, like for example from a second floor of lots of main buildings such as the Distop Ward or the new Area of Crows main building. Then again, if you happen to get an indoor map, this add-on won't do a lot for you to put it in neutral, but I think the effect is fair for being a common add-on and will have way better use than what the add-on currently has. Next on the list is a personal favorite of mine, which is the reworked cheap colonne. Renders actions such as breaking generators, pallets and breakables and such in lock has completely silent while night shot is active. If there's one dumb effect for an add-on that I wanted to be added, it's this one. This obviously has the dumb application to make breakable wall breaking silent and make your approaches to generators potentially more sly, but it also can be used to mind game with shroud mind games to break pallets silently without survivors realizing it. It still makes sounds when vaulting and dropping from heights obviously, but it will make for some niche interesting place for sure. I think the placing as a common add-on is also fairly justified while making this an add-on with which some funny, you know, some funny Twitch YouTube clip highlights would become possible, if you see what I mean. Not much else to say, very self-explanatory actually, let me you know your thoughts about that one, I really like that idea. And the final add-on, the reworked Warlock's matchbook, is just a simple copy of an original add-on of the first Ghostface PTB back in 2019. Instantly refills the Nitro power gauge whenever a generator is completed. It is the same effect Philly had back in the day and honestly it is a fine idea for Brown. Would I use it a lot personally? Probably not, but I think it's a fine effect for a slight comeback if the game goes south and in my opinion also very valid for a brown add-on. Starting off with the more interesting yellow add-ons, let's talk about the first crouched base add-on, the kill straps. Right now the add-on is completely pointless with how little it gives you to actual crouch speed, so the version has a different effect altogether. Increases the lunge of basic attacks by 50% while crouched for at least 2 seconds. This works similar to coup de gras and sort of works as a smaller pick lunge with functionality at mostly the rock loops. That obviously makes it not great to use in every situation but grants more hits in those situations and also makes crouching and chases and mind gaming with it more viable. Next up on the list is the new Olsen's journal, with an effect where I'm unsure myself if I'm just stupid, or if that actually has good value. The concept is very simple, when does the reveal sound completely silent for survivors? The idea is two things, for one, if they try to reveal you, it might trick survivors that they do the reveal process wrong and they need to reposition themselves, giving you more time. And for two, there's a reveal duration add-on later, we will talk about that later, which gives them yet another misconception on it, that they do the reveal process wrong or not. I'm legit curious about what you think about this one, if I'm dumb and this effect is completely pointless or if this has actually legit strong value. I feel though that it is very unique at the very least. 
I'm asking myself a very similar question with the new Olsen's address book which is one of the two add-ons related to action interrupts or you know grabs. Increases the time for hooked or down survivors to reveal the ghost face by 2 seconds. Actions interrupts do no longer end night shroud and the ghost face cannot be revealed while carrying a survivors. Yet again, grabs as of now are very inconsistent, but I really wanted to bring some grab addons in as in some way it is part of Ghosty's kit after all as a stealth heavy killer. The core idea is to keep the night shroud going if you do action interrupts while also on a secondary note being somewhat of a training add-on with how it punishes you less when you walk around hooks and slugs. The 2 seconds is definitely something that in case of this making camping with shroud too easy that you could tune down. But other than that, I feel like this add-on has a place in a world where not every grab cancels for some godforsaken reason obviously. Last but not least there's the marked map which I didn't really change that much. To be quite frank I didn't really know what to do with it and I still wanted to keep the spirit of that add-on so I just added an effect on the existing one. The whole thing reads like this. Increases killer instinct duration when the ghost face is revealed by one second. All survivors with at least 50% stock progression are shown with killer instinct in addition. Still pretty air in my estimation. This add-on has the added benefit now to give you more information on where future targets are if you prepared stocks for them in advance. Hard to use if not experienced for sure I admit it. But I believe that if you can use it well that you can get passive information from it to where to go next for 99 prey once the 24 seconds are over. Now with all the quote unquote weaker lower rarity add-ons out of the way it is time to get to the more interesting and more discussion worthy add-ons that start at the green ones with the new Orson's wallet. Increases vaulting speed by 15% and pallet breakable breaking speed by 20% while night shroud is on cooldown. Obviously very inspired by the uh, Hillbilly's Pig Loves add-on, this add-on essentially helps you to potentially get downs when you are the weakest. It essentially gives you brutal strength and bamboozle without the window block effect of course. During the 24 second period and only during the 24 second period, once the power is ready again, the effect disappears. Since the effect is passive, I would consider adding the downside that it doesn't stack with other effects like Boodle or Bamboozle. In the case of Bamboozle, running Bamboozle would only give you the window block as an extra effect. If it turned out to get insanely crazy with stacking, truth be told, I can't really estimate if this is truly strong or not. It supposedly aids when you get a full mark but they break you out and you would have nothing in chase. But since it's completely passive and without requirements I don't know how strong something like this is allowed to be. Either way I hope this presents a unique add-on idea in comparison to the lame current version. Way simpler is the leather knife shade add-on. Increases the crouch movement speed by 10%. Currently Ghostface has 3 crouch speed add-ons, you have to combine the strongest with another one for it to be worth it as only then you are barely faster than the survivors running which is absolutely absurd. This version is just one crouch movement speed add-on that is worth it as it puts the crouch speed to 100% on par with the running speed. So if you crouch you don't lose any distance with this add-on. I think overall not much to say or talk about. I would even go out of my way to say that when behavior makes the ghosty rework that if they look at crouch movement speed add-ons it is a requirement almost to make a similar change like this as the current system is really dog shit with how it handles the add-on policy. Okay let's make parkour to a very complicated add-on to understand at first glance which is the other grab based add-on, the new lasting perfume. Whenever you perform an action interrupt, gain a token towards night shroud, press the power button while the power gauge is on cooldown, 
to enter Night Shroud and consume one token. You gain tokens for Yoinking people and you know if the Yoink fails you get the token still with like the grab compensation. Even though if that add-on became a thing I bet the devs would rather disable the add-on than actually fixing grab since you know it's behavior with the fuck killers attitude we are talking about. The total grab issue aside, I think even though this sounds incredibly strong at first with essentially giving you free night shot uses, if you successfully grab someone, it is grabs we are talking about. And I mean that in a sense of survivors being able to easily react if they're paying attention and grabs in general being risky business. There's no hard condition on how you need to get the grabs, so I can see players farming stacks at windows and pallets the same way they conserve play with a few food stacks, but I don't believe that even then this would get too much out of hand. Maybe I'm wrong though, I'm interested to hear your thoughts as this is pretty much the first time in DVD history that grabs are actively becoming part of an add-on mechanic. <laughs> we are really going up and down now as the new ad next add-on is much simpler again. The new knife belt clip has a way more fitting effect thematically than the current one which gives you stock for some reason. I don't know. Like the new effect is this. Downing a marked survivor applies the hemorrhage and the mango starters effect until fully healed. To compare it with the old version in the first PTB, you know back in 2019, I believe that back then it was applied mangled from crouching after crouching for 2 seconds or something like that. This effect goes more back to its roots essentially. Very simple to understand as it essentially gives survivor sloppy butcher of the ghost face player stalks his prey and does the job right. Maybe a bit harsh that you actually have to stalk the survivor instead of, you know, making it an effect when hitting out of Night Shroud. You could argue it should be very easy to achieve like that. But then there's the purest cunt me who wants to encourage good ghosty play gameplay and therefore make this add-on not a free thing to use. I think this iteration is more than fair, but you know, that is also only my opinion, you know. And now, it's big boy reveal time, as I talk about the new version of Chewed Pen, the very famous popular add-on that every ghost face and their mom dedicate a shrine to as holy as this add-on is to them. And yes, I couldn't help myself but give this one a very strong controversial effect. Whenever you enter Night Shroud, all survivors with at least 50% stalking progression are revealed to you with a killer instinct for 2 seconds. Affected survivors hear a global noise notification. It is essentially reverse reveal time, as this add-on is potentially quite broken with the info it gives. Therefore I added immediately the downside that survivors that are 99 get a bit of a warning that they might be the next target. No idea how that would play out and honestly I might be too biased to say if this add-on is balanced or not as information is very crucial for any Ghost Race player and this add-on might just do way too much for them. Then again, it doesn't do a whole lot if you don't prepare in advance so it will only benefit players a whole lot that are actually playing smart and like Ghostface experts that actually 99 a lot of people so the add-on limits to that. Depending how strong this add-on now actually is, the downside is to stay or not or the 50% threshold is to be modified or not depending on how strong it now actually is. But I do believe that in a very good hands of a very good player this add-on has the potential to be just devastating while at the same time limited by the fact that you might have a match with not a whole lot of setup where this add-on doesn't do a whole lot. Yet again sorry not sorry for to throw in such a controversial material but I know that my ghosty expert colleagues would burn me alive if I only came up with a mediocre effect for the add-on that they found thousands of over the last few years. So there we go. We are slowly getting through the add-ons which I'm very happy about so let's keep going and talk about the first purple one, the victim's detailed routine. 
All survivors outside of your terror radius suffer from the incapacity. It does effect for 10 seconds every time a marked survivor is put into the dying state. For those who are not too familiar with incapacitated, it's essentially the same thing Victor does for jumping on a survivor or if you've ever been affected by eruptions. So essentially you become useless, you can't heal or repair gens and a bunch of other things. This add-on obviously has most potential the better you are with the stalking mechanic. I think at maximum potential you can get good value out of it and good stall. The fact that it is based outside terror radius also encourages survivors to not only be somewhat close to the ghost face but also to try to reveal him while they are working on a gen and a chase is happening next door so they can minimize the damage the stall does to them. And other than that, I don't know what else to say about this add-on. I think it is justified as is and only becomes very, very strong the better you actually are with this killer, which is a good design philosophy to follow. The drop leg knife sheath add-on got a whole makeover as it doesn't affect crouching anymore. Whenever a marked survivor is put into the dying state, the ghost face movement speed is increased by 5% for 10 seconds the next time you enter night throughout. This effect persists for the entire duration. That last effect refers to the times where you would get revealed immediately after entering Night Shroud, that it would still go on for the whole 10 seconds, just to clarify if it sounded a bit weird. This add-on as 5% is quite a bit of movement speed, has lots of potential in my eyes for yet again playing very good with your stalking power, it can help you chasing when stuffed or most commonly help your approach targets faster and generally travel over the map more quickly. For reference this has the same effect philosophy like the Valhope 2 stacks have if you don't, didn't already notice that which is also an underrated effect in my opinion. Overall, I think this has lots of potential, but it is also not too oppressively strong as it is balanced by play skill yet again. I really love the design philosophy as you can see with like rewarding good stalking player skill with Ghosty. And the last purple add-on we are covering is the new driver's license which is the new reveal based add-on but actually 100 times worse compared to the current one. Increases the time to reveal the ghost face based on proximity to the revealing survivor. That means an increase of 0.2 seconds starting at 12 meters, adding up another 0.2 seconds starting at 18 meters and another 0.4 seconds starting at 24 meters, stacking up to a total of 0.8 seconds longer reveal duration at that 24 meters if you do the math. The ghost face is invisible beyond 32 meters. These values don't seem like a whole lot but they do add up to the default 1.5 second duration and I think if you, you went more overboard bought with these values an expert ghost face player would never get revealed ever again with good navigation. The invisibility beyond 32 meters all of Freddy doesn't add gameplay depth to the reveal mechanic itself as the maximum reveal range is 32 meters anyway. But it adds an interesting game mechanic to stalk from a distance limited beyond 32 meters and just you know move around without focus survivor eyes spotting you across the map like let's say on a blood lodge or something where you can be seen across the entire map. I think this take is way better than the current one that just reduces the meters as the new version still has the spirit somewhat but has more impact on short ranges as well. And encourages survivors to get closer to you and more in danger and combining that with the previously mentioned Olsen's journal this could become a fun combo on the ghost man. And now to the grand finale, the ultra rare add-ons. I had lots of wild ideas for them like an effect similar to Plague's Eerie Seal with marks with gens completed which I decided against because it takes away lots of skill obviously. An add-on to allow new stalking from low thin gaps and upside down, down from another floor but that felt too complicated and not too satisfying so I kept it very simple. Sorry about that. 
So the new Ghostface caught on tape add-on simply reads like this. Instantly refills the Nightshot power gag every time a marked survivor is put into the dying state while Nightshot is active. Incredibly simple to understand. You do a professional play with his power, you get it back instantly ready to use. If you mark them, but you get broken out, the add-on effect doesn't trigger. If you don't stalk them, it doesn't happen either. Rewarding very strong, strong plays with a seemingly strong effect. Truth be told, considering that you might hook them afterwards and then the power normally would be ready again, I don't think the add-on is that strong after all, except in situations where all of a sudden you can go mayhem and snowball if there are multiple people around. It's a lame add-on idea for sure, but simple and effective and probably something lots of people would settle in with being ultra rare worthy. And since I like the outdoor security camera and I do think that it is in the current Ghostface loadout the only add-on that is fine and good and also with the ultra rare slot, I didn't change the functionality of it at all. It still has the same effect and condition. I merely added 2 seconds of aura reading to make it more in line and worth it on other aura reading effects so the duration is now 6 seconds in total. Not a whole lot to say, this add-on is great and currently still overlooked and underrated by a lot of people out there in my opinion. And with that, we do finally, finally come to a close with the add-on pass and with the overall rework concept that I put together. Thank you a lot for watching. I could probably have talked a lot more about specific new mechanics in general, but I didn't want to nuke this video's length even more than it already is and waste more of your time. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed and please let me know your thoughts on these changes if I'm a genius or if I'm just here talking nonsense. And without further ado, I hope you have a good rest of your day and take care everyone. Bye-bye.